Hey on folks, this one reminds me of reviewing and tools and uh, what I'm going to do is uh, show you some hammers, they're not in good shape <laughs> but uh, I'm going to show you all the hammers that I have and uh, over the years just collect, not as a collection, just use, use them for work uh, and they were just a work tool but uh, not too long ago I seen a nice video on YouTube Scout Crafter brought out some of his hammers and uh, they're in excellent shape I mean, he had some nice hammers there and um, they were all nice some were pristine really the majority were pristine so what I'm going to be showing you is just what I have I haven't cleaned them up I've uh, I guess you could say I've kind of abused them in a way I just use them throw them aside leave them here and there as you can see how this one looks rusted but uh, I'll go through all my hammers this I consider just a regular hammer with a steel shaft on it and a rubber grip and it's just a regular claw hammer uh, I don't know exactly where I bought this from or how long I've had it and uh, it's been a go-to hammer around the house for a long time and that's just uh, one of the regular hammers I have and I go by by the regular hammers that is this way here comp compared to the uh, other hammers that are uh, are different. All right, this is another one. Now, this one used to have. I think this was a Craftsman hammer that used to have a, a rubber on it, and uh, I used this a lot. I had used it a lot, so much so that the rubber actually rolled away and started sliding off, and eventually uh, got thrown away. But you can see the condition uh, this is in. Um, like I said, not the best conditions. I just use hammers and then put them aside and here and then. Uh, here's another hammer, like a regular hammer. And this is an S-wing. It's got a nice cushion grip on it. This is a pretty pretty long hammer, as you can see, compared to this one here. It's longer. It has a nice uh, curve on it here that holds so it won't slip off as easy. Nice shaft on it, thin. Not too heavy, well balanced. All one piece versus something like this, where you can see how that is. And that is kind of broken there. And that's one piece, too. So, this is going to be uh, probably just video of run over a few days as I get the hammers. I'm still finding hammers around here and there throughout the house. Uh, there's another regular hammer. This is a uh, a Stanley, I don't know if you can see it. It's a Stanley on it. That's one piece. And that has a nice uh, nice rubber grip on it, as you can see. Kind of worn down, has worn on it. But, uh, you can see, like I said, it's a Stanley on that. I've had this a long time. Actually, I think um, possibly I got this first going into the trades, I think, of um, being an electrician's uh, apprentice, electrician. I think I got this then. And that was been a while ago. So these are the regular hammers versus the... Um, versus a hammer like this here. This is a framing hammer. Uh, I've always considered them roofing hammers. So if you're up in the roof, from what I understand, what people say when you're sliding down, and you, you can turn around and boom, it'll stick right into the wood and it'll hold you from sliding off the roof. Uh, that's in bad shape because I've abused the tool. I haven't uh, used, kept them up. I use them and uh, just put them aside. They've been here, there, and everywhere, left everywhere. This has got a little leather, leather uh, handle on it, at least the part that you, you grip on. Whereas these are rubber. This one's leather. This is an old hammer. I think this one had been my dad's at one time. You can see that's a framing hammer, how that's straight in the back there, like that. Here's another one now. 
This one's, uh, this one isn't that new. It, it looks fairly new because it hasn't used that much. But this is a channel lock. You can see it here. This is a channel lock. It's a framing hammer. See the length of it. Wedges are in there. It's wood. And you can see by the color of the wood. It hasn't been used much. This has been on my, my body. I've used this uh, through the years as an electrician, all the years. Uh, this one has been my staple hammer <clears throat> that I've kept on the belt at work. And uh, fortunately, it was on the belt, and then I'm using other hammers that were in the toolboxes. <laughs> and even though this was on the belt as I was working, that's another uh, framing hammer. And I uh, have another framing hammer in here, one piece, nice and thin here, easier to, for weight to, to work with. And uh, this one is uh, S-Wing, E-S-T-W-I-N-G, S-Wing, with a rubber handle. And uh, this has been well used, this is an older hammer, and it's been well used quite a bit. And uh, I think that was my dad's hammers there. Both this one and this one here are both S-Wings hammers. One being the framing, one being the regular. And, um, all right, this, for, for right now, this is the stage I'll go at on just these hammers here. And I have plenty more to show. And um, I've run out of room, as you can see. And these are the framing hammers. See the length of them here, the straightness. Here versus the roundness here. You don't see many hammers with the wood as much as you used to. This is a channel lock, this one here. Like I said, this one and this one are the same company, S-Wing. Now here's another hammer. It's got a regular head on it. The round. And uh, this has a screw in it, so you can actually, if the handle broke, you can screw this out and get another handle. Now this is kind of one of those uh, specialty hammers, or gimmick hammers, should you want to call it. But it takes uh, two, two penny and one and a half inch penny. See these maximum size to put in this head? And I'll show you where they go. These nails, one and a half inch to two inch nails, they go into here. They go in the bottom here. You put nails in there. And they all pack in here. You have a, a lever here, a little, a little like a switch. As you push that, a nail comes through. It'll come through here. And you push it like that. There's a magnet in here. And the head will go on there and just flip it down. So what happens is the nail will come out here and be sticking out. I don't have a nail right now. But it'll be like that. The nail will be like that so that when you hammer, it goes in a little bit. Then you can continue hammering it in the rest of the way. Uh, I've got another one of these. It's in, in, got a wooden handle. Uh, except it doesn't have this whole attachment to the thing. It's just on the top has a notch. You put the put the nail in there, bend it down, hammer it once, take it off and hammer it in. <laughs> uh, I used it a little bit when I first got it, but then it became a hassle, just, I don't know, just a hassle using it. Um, I never really used this, this one here. Um, this actually was my son's hammer. He uh, bought this, and uh, he hardly ever used it, but uh, he used it somewhat, but not as much as other hammers. And that's like what I call, what I consider a specialty hammer. Now here's another one, another hammer. This is a S-Wing also. 
You can see that by that rubber handle. It's a nice, a nice grip. Now this one here is, uh, it's like a hammer on one end, as you can see how, how that looks. And then, basically, it's like an axe on the other end. Uh, you got holes in it, I think, to pull up nails. As you can see here. Um, I never really looked this up. Uh, it's well used, well used. And uh, terrible shopping job I did on it. It's too bad because this is a nice, nice tool, and um, it feels nice in the hand. Nice grip on it. But it's another one I consider a specialty tool. And this is another one, real lightweight. This is a uh, soft, and you know, like the, the dead end hammers. This is for small, real light work that you want to start on finished wood and so forth. Get this nail started. That's a small one. That's old. This is old. This is pretty old. It's uh, quite the hammer. And then we got the uh, the rubber ones, the mallets. <laughs> uh, I use these quite a bit, particularly putting up some uh, tents and uh, shelters and so forth. And uh, just to persuade it for some things that need to be bent over, uh, whatever. This is the, the smaller of the two that I have. And then I have a, a, a bigger one, and uh, that's a craftsman. This is a craftsman, as you can see. And uh, warning: always wear safety goggles, user and bystander. So this one is a, a newer of the two. Uh, this has gotten used quite a bit. Like I said, I use these for a number of things around the yard, the house, uh, tra a trailer, just to, to get things in. Other than um, really needing a, a steel hammer, and that's that's these these are specialty hammers, like I say, like this one here. This is another one. This is a a nice. This is an old. This had been my dad's. It's got a leather. This is leather under here. It's got paint all over it. And um, this is a, uh, what they use with the the mortars and bricks when you when you're putting a brick wall up or something. You're working with bricks. This is the kind of hammer you would use. You can score them and this will, will break them. When you get used to this, you can break a brick whatever size you want. Nice and even. And uh, there's a name here. I can't really make up so much rust and dirt on it. But I like these handles. This is uh, another one. This is leather. The bottom of it. These are well made. I don't know who makes this. Maybe I, when I do clean these up, We'll see what name is on that and make another video. See how thin that is? Nice and thin. That kind of takes off a lot of the weight, like this one here, too. It's thin in there. But it's got some strength to it. And then the last one is this one here. Now, this was made my oldest son. Uh, was a machinist. He uh, no longer does that anymore, but he was a machinist and he made this in some downtime, I guess, at work. Oh, no, actually, he, this was made at school. When he was in, uh, in school, he, uh, he made this when he was in school, becoming a machinist. It's um, the soft work. These come off. Exactly, those pieces come off. And uh, it's nice. I've used it. Not many times, but on stuff that I don't want to damage. Get the soft ends on it. And he did a, did a very good job on it. Again, like I said, this, this one here is my son's hammer. All right, let's see what else we have. This is this hammer here. This is the switch on it. Nails go in there. The minimum and maximum size nails. You can see the magnet in there. That's the magnet. And they'll come down through that little little shaft there and line up. Works pretty well. It works good. It's just um, I don't. Know, I found time consuming in a way. Unless I never really got 
used to working with it. So I was so easy to take a nail out of my pouch and hammer it in versus setting this up. I don't know what these hold are for. I'm just taking nails out, possibly. This is another uh, S-Wing. This is a nice light one for light work. This is a craftsman, a lot of craftsman tools. And this is the, I say the one for uh, working with bricks and the one that my son made. I know they all need uh, to be cleaned up, get the rust off, and I will do that. Have more respect for the tools. Okay, we all know what this one here is, a ball peen hammer. <clears throat> a lot of uh, working with metal, soft metals like you know, your fenders on your car, or dealing with your car. And this is a, a Stanley. Uh, if I cleaned it up, we'd get some numbers off that. There are some numbers on it. This is a, a medium to small. The handle breaks, you can see. You can get this out and put get another handle on it and hammer this back on and wedge it back on. But that, this one here is a Stanley. I do use these quite a bit working uh, on the uh, vehicles of the house and so forth for some metal work. Now this is a smaller, this is another Stanley. Another ball peen. This is small work. Basically, uh, <laughs> like the appliances in the kitchen and so forth. Uh, kind of use this on that. And uh, some of the hobbies that I have that I need, I need a hammer, but not too big. And uh, this is what I would be using. It's, uh, it's just the right size. Smaller. And then this is my regular ball peen. I know it's in uh, tough shape, rusted up, dirty handle. I understand that. And uh, I don't know who made this. It's got that handle that can be replaced should it break. Being wood, they did that a lot because it would would break. Uh, I do intend to uh, clean some of these up and make them uh, at least very presentable. Right now they're pretty dirty, and. Uh, I will clean them up. So, that's like a family of, uh, <laughs> a family of ball peens. Different sizes, as you can see. And that being the biggest, this big, I've, I've seen bigger ball peen here, but this a lot bigger than that. A lot bigger. But for what I do for work on cars and, and the metal that I work with, I don't need much more than that. And this is the middle one. This kind of gets uh, used working in the house and so forth. And sometimes on the outside of, on cows and so forth. This is strictly in the house use uh, for small things as you can see because it's a small hammer. Well, those are the ball peens. Right, this hammer here is <laughs> when I do my MIG welding. And I want to uh, break up the slag that's on or finish uh, my welding and get all the crust off it. I use these. Uh, it has this type of handle. You've seen these in many years ago stoves that had uh, well, wood burner stoves and you could take the different tops off of them. And uh, they had the handle like that so that doesn't hold the heat because this sometimes does. Uh, not many times in my case, I don't do a lot of MIG welding. But um, it's in that case there, it's so that the heat won't be transferred to your hand. And it really doesn't, uh, I mean, it does warm up, uh, but uh, not uh, to the point where it would burn you. And uh, I use that quite, quite a bit when I'm MIG welding. Now, this is another one. Uh, for some reason, I end up uh, using this one here. I like that end there. <clears throat> it's different here. I found this to be, to be safer as far as heating up, but uh, some reason I always end up grabbing this one here, uh, I guess the angle or something on it, and uh, again, that's like a, when I'm finishing up, cleaning up on my uh, welding, I use that, and here's another one. The uh, reason I have a number is because I leave them all over the place. This, uh, 
I thought it was Lenco. It is. It's the Lenco. You can see the name right here. And uh, basically, same as this one here. Same handle. Same, basically the same, same thing on that. And this is one of the oldest ones of, of the ones that I have. And uh, I, don't, I never cared for the angle on this one. Uh, this is old. Uh, I, I, when I weld, when I'm doing MIG welding, I'll take the machine outside and go in because I, I weld, weld all the time outside in uh, the big sheds. And uh, what happens, I am leaving the hammers there. And that's why I have, uh, I think I have a couple more. <laughs> I leave the hammers there, and uh, I'm getting another one when I go down to get some supplies at the well shop, and that's why I got uh, so many. I, but this one has was the oldest, and uh, got used the most until lately when I couldn't find it until I went digging up for some hammers and uh, come up with them. Uh, all right, so the other other uh, things I want to show you as far as hammers is. Uh, these ones here, another specialty hammer. Basically, we all have these. That's basically for doing some heavy work. I think this is a Craftsman. I think this came from uh, Sears and Robux. Get the head like that, so if you broke the handle, again, it's a wooden handle. And uh, I've used this quite a bit, quite a bit. I like the length of this handle. So I have another one, a little sledge like this, a bigger head but smaller handle, and a little bit of difficult to get a good swing, good leverage on it. It's nothing like this handle here. This is nice and get a lot of leverage on it. All right, now I got these uh, other. I call them hammers, but they're really not. They're uh, axes, but I've used them quite a bit when I'm. Uh, was splitting wood, and uh, I needed a hammer in a hurry, and this was around. Uh, but they're really, really uh, axes. As you can see, the end is made for hammering, but really for splitting wood, cutting, and then small pieces you could you would put a wedge in and, and uh, split it. This handle, it, it's ergonomically, but I don't like it. See how the handle is? It's too much going this way. Uh, I, I kind of would like it to be like that when I'm cutting. And so when you're hitting your handle, it's like this. I like to have it like that. So I end up on using this one, bring my hand up so I get that angle. But when you put it where you're supposed to be, you lose the angle of cut. So that's why this is a lot a lot of meat on it, because I don't use this one that much. And it's been left around here and there, probably left out in the shed. Now this one here is different. Uh, haven't been used much. Uh, the hammer, I mean, I've used it, you can tell, but, uh, the wooden handle, and uh, I like using this on cutting wood. It's a little bit longer than that one, and uh, that's an older one, but I have used this for uh, cutting a lot of small pieces of wood. It uh, works out real good, and um, so you always have to have these here, which is nice. I like that end, on instead of the double, and I do have a big one that has the double ends on them. And uh, I will show you that. Okay, I went to get the double-ended axe. Unfortunately, the one that was over was this one. I thought this was a double-ender. It's not. This is just a, an old axe, the full length. This is for cutting big pieces, or even cutting a tree down for that matter. And uh, But it has a nice end on it that you really could use as a hammer for big projects. Uh, you can see this was replaced. You can see by the wedge in that. It's a pretty big wedge. But they uh, got a, a bolt and a nut through that. And I think this is the wrong handle that was put on this this here at the time. Uh, but it's a two-hander. That's what this is. So, all right. That's the uh, last of the hammers that I can find right now. <laughs> I do have a few more. But they're here, there, and everywhere as I have uh, two sheds, an outside workbench, and a vehicle that's used for storage of tools also, let alone tools in some of my car and my wife's car. So, there you go. I will clean these up.
they are in uh, not con good condition at all. They are in terrible condition. So there you go, folks.